Hello everyone and welcome to Greedfall, the latest RPG from Spiders Studio. Today we're showing you an extended walkthrough to give a better idea of Greedfall's moment-to-moment -moment gameplay. What we're showing here is taken from an in-development, non-final preview build. A few hours into the game, we've tried to avoid any major story spoilers. You start Greedfall on the old continent in the city of Serene, which is ravaged by a terrible disease known as the Malachor. It is rumoured that the only hope for a cure lies on the uncharted island of Tirfredi, which is where we are right now. The island is inhabited by a magical native people, as well as multiple nations and factions who have travelled from the old continent and established various settlements. Currently we're on a mission from one of these nations, the Bridge Alliance, to locate a camp of missing scholars. Before heading straight to where the camp is supposed to be, we're going to check out a nearby point of interest, a skill altar. These altars can be found hidden away in various locations across the island, granting a free skill point when found. You've got a lot of freedom in terms of where to invest these points, which are also gained by earning experience and levelling up. There are three broad branches of skills, warrior for melee combat, technical for equipment and controlling the battlefield, and magic for the use of offensive spells. You can specialise or mix and match how you want, for this run, we're going to go with a few points in traps, firearms and one-handed blades, but with a larger focus on magic use. You also have attributes, which impact and improve what you can use in battle, and talents, which mainly relate to skills outside of combat. It's starting to get dark. Exploration can be more dangerous at night, as hostile foes show themselves. We'd better find somewhere to set up camp nearby, although it looks like we'll have a small fight on our hands first. Looking at some of the UI elements at the top of the screen, we have our red health bar, blue mana bar, and yellow fury bar. Casting magic depletes our mana pretty quickly, which is why it's beneficial to put a few skill points into equipping melee weapons. This way, when out of mana or wanting to conserve it, you can switch to a different weapon when it naturally replenishes over time. As you can see, fights are in real time, with a mix of magic, close and long-ranged combat. There's also an optional tactical pause which we haven't shown yet, but we'll go into more detail later. Over there is a rather more fearsome foe, a magical guardian intrinsically linked with the island and revered by its natives. For the sake of showing off some more combat, we can try taking it on in a fight, but first let's set up camp just around the corner. You'll often find campsite locations like this scattered around Tier 4 d Campsites aren't just used for resting. From here you can speak with and choose the party members to accompany you, with up to two at once. Let's stick with Kurt and Siora for now. Workbenches are available at any campsite. From here you can craft items such as consumables and equipment. You can also upgrade and customise your existing weapons and armour. For example, we can change the look of this doublet by altering the shoulders, strap and breastplate. As shown on the right, this also alters the stats, meaning you can really dig deep into the configuration of you and your party. Campsites also act as fast travel points to other locations. Let's take a quick look at the island map to give a better sense of the geography. We're just here, while over to the east is the city of Hikmet, settlement of the Bridge Alliance. Down here we have New Serene, your starting point on the island, and newly governed by your cousin Constantine. Over in the west is San Mateus, city of the fervently religious Teleme nation. During your adventure, you'll also come across several native settlements spread throughout Tier 3D. Now that it's daytime, let's try our hand at taking down the Guardian we saw earlier.
You might have noticed the shield icons over the HP bars, including that of our foe. These indicate your opponent's armour, which must be whittled away before you can start dealing significant damage. The fury bar builds up by dealing damage to enemies, rewarding aggressive play. The built up fury can then be used to unleash devastating attacks. We've just fallen victim to one of the Guardian's poison attacks, so let's trigger the tactical pause. From this menu, we can quickly use an antidote to remove the poison effect, along with other consumables, actions, spells and techniques. You can also bind everything in the tactical pause menus to a specific button or key. This way, it's easy to play combat entirely in real-time action, to take a more methodic, strategic approach, or a mix of both. Potions, healing magic from your allies, parrying and dodging are all important when it comes to staying alive during tougher battles. Note that with this build, quick dodges have been upgraded to lightning dashes while we have a divine magic ring equipped. This is only possible thanks to our investment into magic skills. We've managed to bring the Guardian down, and judging from this armour and key, it looks like a mercenary of the Coinguard Guild was a recent victim. Right, let's get back to what we're here for and go look for the missing scholars. For the sake of brevity, we'll jump ahead a bit. In Greedfall, you'll often have the option of a more stealthy approach. With careful sneaking past foes, you can sometimes avoid combat entirely. Looks like the potential campsite is just up ahead. Over there. Tents. This must be the expedition's camp. A camp here? In the open wind? It was definitely set up by scholars. Signs of combat. They were attacked. By the look of the tents and the campfire, it dates back several days. It seems that they were taken prisoner. I don't see any bodies. This looks like scientific equipment. This must be the Lost Expedition's campsite. No weapon leaves this sort of marking. Perhaps they're wielding magic? Yes. It is the art of the Donegada. One of the Valley Clans was here. Would you know which one? One who fights against the invasion of the peoples from your island. I can be sure of nothing more. Why would they attack scholars? They are not warriors. They come here as conquerors. This is enough. But they were not killed. Warriors would have been. This looks like the journal of a naturalist. There are sketches of flora and fauna. There is no doubt. We are definitely on the trail of the lost expedition. It seems that one of the team kept a distance from the others. Let's see what we can discover. A trail of blood. That cannot be good. Follow it. It sounds like there might be another tent nearby. Perhaps we can find more answers by following this blood trail. But first, we've got another fight on our hands. More blood. We are on the right path. Keep going. You can see here the advantage of having skill points across more than one branch. After running out of mana to unleash powerful spells, we can switch to our sword to ensure we're always able to deal out damage. A corpse. The clothes cannot be mistaken. It is a scholar of the Bridge Alliance. From the looks of him, I would say he has been dead for days, as we already thought. This isn't the woman whose journal we found. There is still a chance that she remains alive. 
This man traded his life for all the suffering of my people. He was only a scholar, a sage, not a warrior on the battlefield. Do you think my people see a difference when bridgemen steal our people from their beds? From who do you think? All the clans hide dead children. This man was unarmed. And from the position of his body, I would say he was fleeing. It is not honor that motivates them. Maybe it was vengeance. I'll search the body. We might find something to help us understand. Your choice of companions impacts more than just combat. They'll often intervene in discussions and speak out while investigating, so it's worth considering who might be useful or detrimental to any given situation. Here is the isolated camp mentioned in the journal. Everything is in order, but the inhabitants are no longer here. Its position would have allowed them to escape the attack. Isolated. Discreet. Perfect visibility. Great choice. Fortunately, we have the key from the dead scholar, but if we had high enough lock picking, that would have also been an option. It is a journal, that of a woman from the expedition, a certain Afra. She speaks of their research and relates here that she felt watched. She feared an attack was brewing. I believe she was right. The writing stops in mid-sentence. A woman with sharp eyes. They might have saved their life. We must follow the tracks of the attack. They will surely lead us to the party of intrepid scholars. This woman was right to fear the Donea Exregal. They must have followed this path coming from the swamp. This is where we should go if we want to find these lion scholars. It looks like our next stop is the swamp. Look, those are islanders. They might be from the clan that attacked the Bridger camp. That's possible. They look like trackers. But what are they tracking? New prey, no doubt. Let's get closer. From here, we can either openly approach and confront the natives, or sneak over and listen into what they're saying from a distance. Far weden se lor kwaisa. Esto gen nas kwaise. Estrade da orhel amadred kwaheluknom. New siendad ne sunadet. Well, we don't know enough of the native Tirfridi language to make sense of what that was about. But now they're gone, let's look around for anything else that might help us. That's all we're showing for now, thanks for checking out this gameplay walkthrough. Stay tuned because we've still got a bunch more stuff to show you before Greedful releases September 10th for PlayStation 4, Xbox One and PC.